Europe, the physical geography, part one is the physical features. So for your notes, guys, for your homework tonight, you'll actually have to do both sides. Um, part one, which are, deals with the physical features of Europe, and part two, which deals with the physical processes that affect Europe. So let's get started. Uh, Europe, the physical geography. One thing I want you guys to realize when you take a look at this graphic, um, the green represents Europe, okay? So in one of the first points you should have on your notes guide is um, dealing with the fact that Europe is actually, um, it's made up of two, con one continent encompasses Europe and Asia. Europe is also by far the, is the second smallest continent. It's one of the smallest continents. It is the second smallest one. But the joined landmass of Europe and Asia together is called Eurasia. And unlike the world's, once again, just kind of recapping, unlike the world's other continents, Europe and Asia share a common landmass called Eurasia. Europe is the second smallest continent. What I want you to take a look at on this second illustration, this just shows you guys, um, this is all of Europe. So this shows us what Asia and, and the combined landmass of Europe and Asia, the blue if you're looking in this area, this represents the the, um, the amount of the continent that is Asia. And the yellow represents the amount that is Europe. So we can tell that Europe is pretty small. Now, the continent of Europe itself, what we call Europe in itself is a peninsula. And I'm sure you guys remember from middle school or elementary school that a peninsula is just a landmass that is made up, um, that juts out into a sea or ocean and that is surrounded on three sides by water so if we count this europe of course europe itself is a peninsula but if we count it there are one two three four five at least five peninsulas that make up the continent of europe and europe uh just recapping europe is a large peninsula made up of many smaller peninsulas and going over the definition of a peninsula again um, a peninsula is a body of land jutting into a lake or ocean surrounded on three sides by water one thing that we will touch on a little bit is how the closeness of the sea of how being close to the sea has shaped the lifestyles of most europeans and we'll touch on that in a little while now the scandinavian peninsula i want you guys to kind of focus on that a little bit um, the scandinavian peninsula is here but i want this picture gives us an, a close-up of it and what's encapsulated are the countries that make up the Scandinavian Peninsula are Norway, Sweden, Finland, and Denmark, okay? So the Scandinavian Peninsula is in Northern Europe. A lot of mountains there. Also, it was um, a lot of glaciers were there thousands of years ago. So we have a lot of lakes, a lot of florids along the coastline. And what you'll also see, we'll touch bases on later, is that the differences in the types of mountains that are in Europe. So places like Scandinavia, which are in Northern Europe, uh, due to the glaciers that were once there, their mountain ranges are completely different than places that are in Southern Europe, which did not have as much exposure to, to mountain range, to, um, to glaciers during the last ice age. And we're talking about thousands, if not millions of years ago. So once again, the Scandinavian Peninsula, Sweden, Norway, um, Sweden, Norway, Finland, Denmark, in Northern Europe is, uh, is very mountainous. Uh, the great the glaciers that were once there during the last ice age created thousands of lakes and floods along the coastline. And the Jutland pen pen Peninsula, on the other hand, which is Denmark, is relatively flat. So these three are very mountainous. Denmark, which is part of the Scandinavian Peninsula, is relatively flat compared to um, Norway, Sweden, and Finland. That brings us to discussing the Iberian Peninsula, which is the peninsula, peninsula that is highlighted in green, which actually encompasses the countries of Portugal and Spain. So Southwestern Europe's Iberian Peninsula, Spain and Portugal, separates the Mediterranean Sea from the Atlantic Ocean. Um, the Pyrenees Mountains, which are located right along here, separates the Iberian Peninsula, Spain and Portugal from the rest of Europe. So they form a natural barrier between Spain, Portugal, and the rest of Europe. 
So in the peninsula, um, the Pyrenees Mountains are right here. Now the Apennine Peninsula, which is encompasses the country of Italy. It looks like a long boot. It's always easy for me to remember Italy, and I hope this helps you guys um, on your map test, is when I think about Italy, Italy is a lot like Louisiana when you look at it on the map in that it has a boot shape. So it's always easy for me to remember Italy because once I remember Italy, I know that Greece is next to Italy. Um, it's to the right of Italy. France is to the left of Italy. And then, you know, the Iberian Peninsula of Spain. But Italy, the easiest one for me to always catch in the Mediterranean Sea is Italy. Um, and that is because it's long, it's thin, and it's boot-shaped. Um, the Apennine Mountains, this mountain range, they go down the center of the country of Italy. And it includes active mountains, uh, but the most active one is the volcano Mount uh, Levesis. And the Apennine um, the Apennine Mountains, they extend along the course of this red line through the country of Italy. And the last one, and finally, we get to the Balkan Peninsula. The Balkan Peninsula is highlighted here in blue and is mostly in the country of Greece. Um, it's located in southeastern Europe. And what the Balkan Peninsula is, I'm not sure if you guys you remember the movie Sparta. Um, not Sparta. What was that movie with Brad Pitt? Um, Troy. Troy. Yeah. Troy. If you will. Troy or the movie 300 that dealt with Sparta. All of that occurred here. In here. In Greece. Dealing with the different Greek city-states. And part of the reason that we had so many small um, city-states, which were basically each city was its own country, was the fact that there were so many mountains in this region that this region is so mountainous that it really could only... Um, support a city like each city where uh, it was only really able to support itself and communicate with the people in that city so the mountains prevented the um, it prevented the development of large countries like you see so when you guys watch Sparta oh I'm sorry when you watch 300 Sparta is not a country it's actually a city and um, when you watch Troy and they discuss Athens Athens is not even a country it's really a city all of that is because they're called city-states. It developed that way because the mountain ranges in this area prevented um, people from being able to spread out more and develop communication lines that would, um, that, would, that would facilitate having a large country. So we had each city in Greece was its own country. Now, Europe... We talk about some of the islands in Europe. There are many islands in Europe, um, a lot of land areas. They're smaller than the continent and completely surrounded by water. We'll talk about some of them, and I'll highlight them as we go on. The first one is Iceland, and this is actually on your map test. Map uh, Iceland, it's pretty easy for me to remember. It's at the top. That's what I always, Iceland is the furthest island in Europe that you will be responsible for. The next one is the British Isles. This includes Great Britain, Scotland, Wales. Any James Bond fans? This is where all the James Bonds, all of the James Bond movies occur, right here in Great Britain in the British Isles. Now, the Mediterranean Islands for number three. The Mediterranean Islands are all of the islands that are in the Mediterranean Sea. So when we say the Mediterranean Islands, now you and I would be responsible for the Mediterranean Islands uh, in and of itself for your map quiz but you do have to understand that all of the this is the mediterranean sea and the islands that are in the mediterranean sea are generally referred to as the mediterranean islands now the balkaric islands are right um right to the east of spain they're small islands to the east of spain and finally the island of malta it's not this one. This is actually Sicily. Okay, so the part of the boot that it appears that um, Italy, this is Italy. Remember we discussed Italy earlier. Italy looks like it's a boot. The part of the boot that appears that Italy is kicking is actually Sicily. This is not Sicily. Malta is not shown on your map. It is on this particular map, but it is a group of small islands right to the south of where this five is. Okay. And then we'll discuss the islands of, of Greece, where we discuss um, the Colossus of Rhodes, or Rhodes, one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. We're here, um, Sparta, 
Athens, Greece, all in this area of Sparta, Athens, um, all in here. Rhodes, all of the ancient cities, a lot of the ancient cities or the major players in the ancient world were, were located here. And a lot of these islands are not shown, just like with uh, Malta on this particular map. And just talking a little bit about Iceland. Um, Iceland is an island. It's to the south of the Arctic Circle. A lot of volcanoes, hot springs, and, and geysers. Also, though, just knowing that it's this close to the um, Arctic Circle, pretty cold. Pretty cold. The British Isles, which form Great Britain, are cold, hilly, and rainy. And if you guys think about the James Bond movies, if you watch a lot of those, um, when he's at home, it's often, it's not sunny too often. It's always kind of cloudy when you watch those movies. Now, in the Mediterranean Sea, just touching back on those, there are some larger islands, Sicily, Corsica, Scardina, Cyprus, Crete. It's just all of the islands in this area, okay? Um, they're pretty rugged. They're pretty, it's pretty hard terrain to navigate, but it's very similar to the places that are around it. it and it just makes common sense. If we think about the islands that are near Greece and Italy, um, we know that the, the terrain of Greece and Italy are, are pretty rugged. Then it makes sense that the islands that are near Greece are pretty um, mountainous and pretty rugged terrain. Now just kind of discussing some of the, the mountain ranges in Europe. Um, the older mountain ranges are the ones that, of course, have been around longer. A lot of ancient rock formations, but they've been worn away by erosions due to glaciers. Okay, and this is what we were discussing. What I mentioned earlier when we were discussing Scandinavia, a lot of the older mountain ranges in northern Europe, they're the older ones. Um, they've been worn away. They're not as rugged um, because they were the ones that were part of. They have been worn away by the glaciers that covered northern Europe during the last ice age. So once the glaciers, in the process of the glaciers covering this area, which means this entire area was covered by ice, and then as the world's temperature warmed up and the glaciers moved back or melted away, so the ice coming in wore these mountains down, and the ice going away wore these mountains down. Now, on the other hand, Southern Europe's mountains are younger, and they were not affected as much by um, the mountains. So they're younger, and they're a lot more rugged. So when we discuss the mountain ranges in Italy, Greece, um, the Balkans, they're younger, and they did not have the effect of being worn down by the glaciers um, of the last ice age because the glaciers did not go that far. The Alps, which are located in France and north of Italy. The Alps, the Alps mountain range, they serve as a divider um, between the cooler temperatures of the northern and warmer climates of the south. So just like here in the United States, and it has to do, of course, with the closeness to the equator, um, the temperatures in southern Europe tend to be warmer than the temperatures in northern Europe. And the Alps serve as a, a divider because the cold air, it's harder for the cold air to penetrate the Alps. So the cold air is, is the Alps work as a buffer to prevent cold air from coming down. And so the weather in the southern part of Europe is very nice. Another high mountain range, um, the Carpathians, they run through Eastern Europe and they're located right here. And I think you guys are responsible for all of these on your map test. Definitely the Alps, the Pyrenees, the Apennines, the Balkan Mountains, the Caucasus Mountains, the Ural Mountains. I think the Kojian Mountains as well. Now, when we talk about the soil, or just talking about also discussing the glaciers and the soil and the erosion in that area, uh, we talk about the Northern European Plain. So, the land in the Northern European Plain is, first, let's define what it is. The Northern European Plain, it stretches from France to Russia, so we're looking at right about from here to here. And it is a major agricultural region. And because it is a major agricultural region and what we know about people and where man likes to settle, um, people settle where the land is fertile and where they have access to, to waterways, especially ancient men, because waterways were the best way for ancient man to travel. So 
we know this. So it only makes sense that um, this is where, in this region, is where you have Europe's largest cities because it has very fertile land. Now, going to the, the Dom, which is Eastern Europe's major river, and I will show you where it's located here. Um, it actually flows from the Black Sea. It's in this area. And it flows from Germany uh, to the Black Sea. So and this is just kind of a highlight or, or a closeness of it. This is a zooming in on that map a little bit. And the main Dom Canal, it's built in 1992. And it connects the North Sea, which is here, goes through the country with the Black Sea here. It actually goes through the entire continent. Um, and it connects the North Sea, which is in between Great Britain and Scandinavia, to the Black Sea. So it cuts through the continent of Europe. Physical geography and the natural resources of Europe. So this picture kind of tells us a little bit about two of the natural resources in Europe. We have, uh, this is actually iron ore. So this is what iron looks like when it's mined, before it's processed, and turns to the things that we use in, in automobiles, homes, that. Also, this is coal. So this is what coal would we use for electricity. This is what it looks like before it is, when it is mined and processed. Uh, Europe has a pretty abundant supply of iron and coal, and it actually, this abundant supply of natural resources has helped to support the development of the countries in Europe. Most Europeans uh, rely on coal, oil, and natural gas. Um, they also rely on hydroelectric power from the North Sea or nuclear power. And once again, hydroelectric power um, is just power that is created by water moving. And as water moves through a river, um, it can push pedals or turbines. And in the pushing of the pedals or turbines, that generates electricity. Okay. Um, there's made, there are major reserves of coal, of coal in the United Kingdom, Germany, the Ukraine, and Poland. Now, there are some parts of Europe, though, that have that these forms of, of resources or these forms of, of natural resources or energy are scarce. And in those places, they burn what is called peat. And this picture is actually of peat. Um, and what peat is, it is a pretty dense, mossy substance. And it's found in swamps. So they find this substance peat. They go to the swamps. They dig it up. They dry it out. And then they burn it for fuel. And this picture is just of the North Sea. This is where in this region, countries in this region of um, Europe and the North Sea, they also, they tend to use hydroelectric power. Now, please remember, highlight the answers to the homework learning targets on your notes guide. Also, answer all questions in bold lettering on your notes guide. You have to answer those, do both of these things in order to receive full credit for your homework. The end. Go to part two. This is the end of this video. Um, go to part two. It will cover the climates. Have a good day. See you guys in class.